Welcome to Movie Shortened. Follow us today to a 2001 American science fiction horror film called Mimic 2. Before we start, be aware, there are spoilers. A man named Lincoln Tran is walking through a train tunnel with two suitcases and narrowly avoids being hit by a train. He arrives at a station and sees a shadowy figure. Outside in the rain, he tries to hail a taxi, but it doesn't stop. The figure appears again and he runs through the street trying to escape. The figure suddenly appears in front of him and slashes him with a huge set of claws. A taxi hits them both. The claws penetrate the roof of the taxi and Tran is thrown to the side of the road. The taxi crashes and a crowd gathers. Detective Klasky is briefed on the event by his colleague Cleland. Tran was carrying 75 pounds of dirt. It is revealed that his face has been completely removed. At school, the teacher, Remy, explains that insects exist for survival of their own kind. The creature enters the school boiler room with the other suitcase. Outside, the kids are playing in the rain. Remy is being observed by the creature as it makes insect sounds. That night, Remy has nightmares of her previous encounter with the insect creature. Her room is filled with all kinds of creatures and insects. The next day at school, Lou, the janitor, is working and tells Remy that she is the only thing he'll miss about this school. Outside, she is approached by Nikki, an ex-student with a black eye, who offers to take her out, but she refuses. She tells him that she has a boyfriend. She leaves on her bike. Remy records a new answering message when a guy named Jason appears at her door. She says that she is going out. They have been on one date, but he doesn't seem to understand that she isn't interested. He smashes through her door in anger and then leaves. In her closet, she has Polaroid pictures of herself with men's names written on them. She writes Jason's name beneath the latest one. Later, out in the rain, she bumps into a shadowy figure, but doesn't notice Jason's dead body is hanging above her. She meets another guy named Philip for dinner. Afterwards, he offers to take her home, but she won't go with him. After she leaves, he is hit by an unseen assailant. He is knocked out and dragged up the side of a building and through an air duct. On her way home, she is approached by Klasky. He goes to her apartment and looks around. Outside, she can see a shadowy figure which then climbs the building and watches them inside. Lincoln Tran was a colleague of hers, but she explains that he sold endangered species online. Over 200 species are now extinct because of him. Klasky makes notes and she thinks that he is accusing her of murder. He leaves and she locks the door behind him. As he walks through the alley, Jason's body drops down on top of him. Later, Remy is questioned by Klasky at the station and he reveals that Jason's face was also missing. Back at home, she takes another Polaroid of herself. The next day, Cleland suspects Remy is the murderer, but Klasky asks him how he thinks that a tiny lady managed to lift Jason's body so high off the ground. At school, Remy is suspended by the principal, Maury, for her suspected involvement in the murders. Lou finishes his dinner and returns to school. Sal is still at school after 6 p.m. His aunt has yet to pick him up. Remy says that they will wait until 7 p.m. and then she'll take him home. Lou walks to the school but is being followed by the creature. Inside the school, he tries to do some pull-ups on a bar, but is attacked. Klasky returns to the scene of Jason's murder. He enters Remy's apartment and finds a wall of Polaroid pictures. The latest picture has his name written beneath it. He removes it and puts it in his pocket. Outside, there are a group of military investigators who, under ultraviolet light, discover some kind of white fluid in the hallway. Remy decides that it's late enough, and she decides to take Sal home. The corridor has been blockaded with school equipment, and Remy finds some of the same fluid. She calls out for Lou, but Maury answers, who tries to help by moving some of the equipment. A huge bug drops down behind him and drags him away. Remy and Sal run, and she states that it's not possible, as they were all dead. They hide in a room and find Nikki already there. Sal tells her that he hides in here from his dad. Remy tells the kids to keep guard while she checks the window. She sees the creature and takes a picture of it. The flash startles it, while they escape back through the corridors. The military investigators detect the presence of more fluid all up the wall outside Remy's apartment. Klasky walks away. Remy tells the boys that some time ago, students were getting ill from cockroaches. She tells them that they created a new breed of insect to kill them, but they didn't all die. Some continue to mutate and evolve to mimic their only real predator, humans. The Polaroid picture she took of the creature looks like Lou. Remy tries to reassure Sal that the insect has no reason to hurt them. She suggests that Lou disturbed their nest and that's why it attacked him. Nikki is searching and finds a suitcase and tries to open it. He reads the name. Lincoln Tran, and Remy tells him to leave it alone. Suddenly, it pops open. He says that it's just dirt inside, but insects start to emerge. They try to close it again, but the insects crawl out everywhere. They try to stomp on them, leaving the white fluid everywhere. Nikki thinks that they have disturbed the nest. Klasky arrives at the school, but the door is locked. Remy suggests that running would be a mistake. She says that it will still act like a cockroach, so it is afraid of the light and likes confined spaces. They have sensors that detect air movement, so running will draw it out. They also have the ability to learn from their own mistakes. 
Remy takes pictures to make sure that the coast is clear. She says that they will also be attracted by their sweat, so they must stay calm. They continue onwards, but eventually the camera needs time to recharge. They hear the creature behind them, but it is going the opposite way. Sal realizes that it is checking on the babies, so they run to try to clear the blockade. The creature breaks its way through the door behind them. It has Lou's face, but that opens up to reveal an insect head instead. The boys crawl through the blockade first as a creature scuttles along the ceiling towards Remy. The camera has recharged, and she uses the flash to startle it and then follows the boys. She pulls the blockade closed behind them, but it starts to break through. The camera has run out of battery again, and the creature advances. She asks it to kill her quickly. It is wearing Lou's face again and seems to stop, but suddenly Klasky arrives and shoots the creature. Remy is covered in the white fluid and they escape to the principal's office. They switch on the lights. Remy calls the Center for Disease Control, Epidemic Intelligence Service. She tells them that she has an adult of the Judas breed in the school and asks them to hurry. Nikki and Sal are looking for weapons, but Remy says that everything they have is useless. If they manage to chop it off, then it will still be alive for nine days until it starves to death. The creature is inside the wall tracking Remy by her scent. She tells them all to leave, as it's her that it is after. Nikki suggests leaving her scent behind somehow. Klasky leaves with Sal, but gives her his Polaroid picture before he goes. They can hear the creature when suddenly the phone rings. They don't answer and the creature becomes more agitated. The military investigators arrive and say that she didn't answer the phone. They use the ultraviolet light on the outside of the building and see the white fluid all over. Klasky and Sal crash through the doors, telling them that there are two more people in the principal's office. The investigator says that there can't be any more, as they just called. Klasky asks them to wait, but they say that there's no time. Remy and Nikki creep through the corridors when the creature crashes through the ceiling. Klasky hits the investigator and runs back inside the school. The creature is examining Remy and Nikki. She realizes that his scent is now on her, and it will now try to eliminate him. She stands in the way while he escapes, but is stabbed by the creature's claws. Klasky arrives and shoots it whilst Nikki escapes. The creature attacks Klasky but stops when the military arrives and it drags Remy away. Klasky gives chase. Outside, some canisters of gas arrive. Remy is hung upside down in the nest and pulls herself free. The white fluid is covering her wound. As she walks through the corridor, she finds Klasky who picks her up. The military release the gas and as he tries to carry her outside, they find that the entrance has been sealed. Remy manages to cut the seal and releases them from the school. She wakes some time later in a hospital bed, being examined by some medics. She worries that there is something inside her. The medic says that they removed insect larvae from her body. He tells her that he doesn't know what they were, as they were immediately confiscated by the Department of Defense, but they were responsible for her remarkable recovery. The military are still at the school looking for the creature. They find a shell and realize that it has already morphed into a new creature. They need to find it while its skin is still soft. Sal comes to visit Remy. He brings her a jar of ants. A short time later, Sal returns home with Remy. They find that her new door is open. The suitcase is on her bed with a hole in it. She spies a cockroach scuttle under her bed. She tries to make a phone call, but it has been disconnected. Her door handle rattles. It is Klasky and she is relieved, although suddenly she realizes that he is covered in the white fluid and blood and making insect noises. The military investigators find Klasky's body and learn that it wasn't him that carried Remy out of the school. Remy approaches the creature and examines the face. She suddenly slashes at it quickly. It lays on the floor in front of the door, but as she tries to open it, the creature begins to writhe again. Sal states that they have to wait nine days for it to die of starvation. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.